favorite songs associated with Hanukkah is a Jewish hymn that's called Maoz Zur. There's an English translation that says Rock of Ages, but it literally means the rock that is strong. And it reminds us that through every hardship, God is, as the Psalms say, our rock and our fortress, a very present help in time of trouble. So what does it mean when we say that God is our rock? If we were to apply the Bible wishfully, I think that we could say that God is our strength, that he will always protect us that the God who is so present that he sees every sparrow that falls will always reach out his strong right hand to catch them. But that wouldn't be true, would it? We can flip through the prophets and see that not only did calamity befall Israel, but God predicted it. Look in Jeremiah chapter 1. After Jeremiah sees the vision of the almond branch that I mentioned in our first installment, he then sees a boiling pot facing away from the north. And God says this means that calamity is about to be poured out on Israel from the north, like scalding hot water. Israel had sinned against God. They rejected him as their God and turned their face toward idols. They worshipped Baal and Asherah. Why? Because they promised them things like fertility, good crops, good luck, whatever they asked for. And what can I say? We Jews were very superstitious, but it becomes a problem when you go around trying to satisfy your desires with whatever comes to hand, and you don't even realize that you're actually cheating on God. Israel rejected their cornerstone. They tried to build off the foundation. They built their house on the sand. God says through Isaiah, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. God wasn't punishing them through the captivity, but it took that time away from the promised land for him to get their attention. Um, for them to realize that whatever was wrong was on the inside. What's your idol? Today we don't sit here and bow down before graven images. We don't, you know, go, oh, to totem poles. We don't light little candles to all these little gods and expect them to water our crops and feed our land. But what do we do? Maybe the best question to ask oneself is, what is more important to me than anything? Because chances are the answer to that question is what's an idol for you. God wants to be the cornerstone of your life. A rock, something to cling to, something that's central, something that's strong, that will not be moved. A cornerstone is the foundation stone of a building and everything else is built around it. It's not going anywhere. But when we try to build off the foundation, is when our house will fall to the ground and collapse. Sometimes God allows that to happen so that we can get back to the right foundation and build our house on the rock. Now I looked at that verse where Jesus quotes in the New Testament that the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And right after that, he makes an amazing statement. He says of the, himself this cornerstone, whoever falls upon this rock, meaning himself, shall be broken and who, on whomsoever it falls, he will be crushed. Those don't sound to me like either pleasant alternative. I don't want to fall on a rock and be broken. If I had to choose, though, I would rather be broken on it than crushed by it. But really, I would rather just go back to God saving me from calamity, being that fortress and that strong tower. I think in a sense we are all broken. You know, we're all flawed human beings. But there's a certain type of brokenness that the Bible talks about that leads us to repentance and healing. Jesus tells of two men who came to God in prayer, and the one advocates himself to God. Um, and he talks about what a great person he is, how he works hard and tithes and keeps the law and does everything that he's supposed to do, and all that might be true. But the other guy just falls on his knees and says, Oh God, I'm sorry. God, I am such a mess. Please have mercy on me and help me. And that man went home justified in the eyes of God because he said, God, I'm a sinner. And God had grace on him. And I think back on the times in my life where I felt broken like that, when I lost the horror of praying that prayer, dear God, please help me. There's a difference between praying for assistance and asking for grace. It's like the difference between sticking your quarter in a vending machine and expecting something to come out of it versus knocking on a friend's door in the middle of the night when the last time you talked to that friend, you said you never wanted to speak to them again. That's grace. It's asking for grace, knowing 
full well in confidence that you will receive it because the steadfast love of God never ceases. Whoever falls upon this rock will be broken. Repentance is painful. It hurts our pride. It breaks up the front that we keep up to the world. But it's the only way. God is near to the brokenhearted, healing and binding up their wounds. And the Lord's love is steadfast. So in brokenness is our strength. A broken heart and a contrite spirit, David says, O oh Lord, you will not deny. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, sheyasa nisim lavotenu bayamim hachem baziman chaseh. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has performed miracles for our ancestors in the past and will perform miracles for us today. O Lord, work a miracle in our hearts and our minds. Be the cornerstone of our lives. Be our strength and take away from us everything in our lives that does not bring you glory. Amen. Rock of ages, let us sing.